All of us at the Dub Network and Harps Court would like to thank the crew at Herman Marshall Whiskey for being such a tremendous partner. Herman Marshall is known for their handcrafted, award-winning small batch whiskey. Whether it is their Texas bourbon, Texas rye, Texas single malt, or their blended bourbon whiskey, all of their whiskeys are built from the grain up, just like good whiskey should be. To another episode of Harp's Court, Court, beg your pardon. Of course, I'm your host, Derek Harper, and I have a special guest. I feel like I've had a lot of special guests on Harp's Court, but this guy is special in a lot of different ways from Long Island, New York. It's the great Chuck Cooperstein, and I think we use Coop the word great loosely, but not in your case, oh, man. No, to no, me, no, 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 no. To me, you're the best this radio is, voice there's ever this been. This is man. the loosest application ever <laughs> I'm just of saying. the term great, yeah, but thank I, you very much. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to get right to it. Obviously, Long Island, New York, Coop, is where everything started for you growing up there. Did you ever imagine that what you are doing would make a living for you? Did, did, did you have... I always hope so. Ambition I, I did, of being yeah. where you are and you, doing what you're you doing. You know, basically, uh, you know, I was 15 years old. I I basically grew to the height that I am now. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped. Right. I played basketball in high school. I played soccer and I played golf. And I was, you know, I was okay in, in golf. I obviously wasn't tall enough to play basketball as right. much as I loved it. But I, that was not going to happen uh, for this slow white guy. You know, it was, it was not, not going to be the you case. Shoot it. I've seen you at shoot around. And you um, shoot it. Every yeah. little bit. And I had, a, had a really good pump fake. Yes. I, could get, I could get people up in the air. Um, but, you know, I love golf, but I was just never never committed to the extent that you know guys are out there beating balls every mm-hmm. day you mm-hmm. know every you know and for hours at a time and my, my freshman year at, at Florida I actually thought about walking on but Mark Kalkovecki was a freshman that year Larry Rents was a freshman that went year high school with Cal, by the way oh, down in, West, in Palm West Palm Beach yeah, yeah. We went to North Shore high school. yeah and you know obviously great player British Open champion is turn, you know, yeah. I mean but you know, I, I'm watching those guys. And there's no way I'm not yeah. doing. I'm not yeah, doing yeah. this. But uh, but I always knew that I love sports and I could talk. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, Marv Albert was uh, under my pillow many nights as I was falling asleep with, right, the, Knicks, right, with, right. with the Knicks and the Rangers. Just listening. <laughs> Just listening. Yeah. And uh, you know, fell in love with sports on radio and radio play by play and hope that that would be the means uh, that I would be making a living because I really didn't feel like I had any other legitimate option. You know, I, w- w- when I think about the league now, Coop, and I know you, you you worked in Philadelphia, you talked about New York, you've been in the mecca of basketball. And what I think you're the perfect person to ask this question because you understand it from what I can see. Uh, analytics. What are the pros and cons, Coop, in your opinion of, uh, of analytics and sports? Uh, I mean, I, I think – there are some analytics that are really good, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, like offensive rating and defensive rating of points per possession or points per 100 or how, you know, to me, that's that's a really fair way to look at and a better way because it, it balances out everything. Like the Mavericks have played seven overtime games this year. So, mm-hmm. you know, numbers can get skewed a little bit that Absolutely. way. Um, but I'm not of the opinion that, analytics necessarily tell a different story than what the traditional numbers tell me. Um, You know, and if I do find that there is a number that tells me something different, I'm more than willing to use it. I think where it's probably helped the most in basketball anyway, Mm -hmm. uh, not just the, the points per possession, but, you know, lineup combinations and things like if you're really getting deep into the weeds on statsmba.com uh you know find out who plays well with one another and the fact that those numbers are available to everybody Uh uh, and it and it does help in in ways to give you an understanding of the game uh you know, on, on a far more uh, visceral level for me, uh, the idea of uh, how the three-point shot has been weaponized uh, is, is a major problem in the game. Uh, and, and let's face it, Derek. Why, we, we, why, why do you say that? Well, be, because it's, it's fundamentally changed. Certainly fundamentally has changed the game and in, in, in how you grew up playing it, how I Absolutely. grew up watching it. Um, and I don't know that it is 
uh, necessarily more visually pleasing uh, mm -hmm. when you have a lot of guys taking threes, mm -hmm. not necessarily being able to make threes. Right. I mean, if you're telling me Steph Curry's going to take 20 threes, I, I have no problem with that. Yes. You know, yes. but uh, but if I have a guy that's shooting 25 percent and he's shooting three or four three pointers well, he's a game, being influenced to shoot them. Too. Absolutely, that's, that's the, oh, no, no question. That's what the coaches coaches want. And right. Preach well, and you know, just let's. You know, I've always used the line, three is better than two. Mm -hmm. That is undeniable. But two is better than none. Yes. And, and <laughs> well you know, we, we saw this in the Indiana game last night. You know, uh -huh. Luca had a couple of chances late in the game, you know, right at the rim. I mean, he, yeah. he had layups. Yes. Those were baskets. Agreed. Agreed. And he passed them out to try to get a three-point shot. And, you know, the, the three-point shot has a variance to it. And granted, the Mavericks have been shooting the three tremendously well here lately. Mm -hmm. But in what turned out to be a really close game, yes. uh, you would, I think, uh, on upon further review, like to have had those two points back. It, it, it should not be looked upon uh, as as a plague of some sort mm -hmm. to, to shoot twos instead of threes. And for that matter, you know, even the mid-range. Uh, you know, we're going to see a guy on Thursday night, Joel Embiid, yes. I mean, who he can shoot threes, but frankly, <laughs> I think it's a win every time he does shoot the three yes. as opposed yes. to him Post him up, to. or post him up, or, or yeah. you know, if he's going to go and shoot that elbow jumper, which is automatic for him, pretty much. Mm -hmm. you know, and certainly for in our case with the Mavericks, with Dirk back in the day. Yes, sir. Although I, I certainly do wonder if if Dirk was born ten years later yeah. and was playing today, you know, would he ever have developed the uh, the one foot fadeaway, fadeaway that right? every that everybody that everybody wants to shoot copy. now? Yeah. And when you get to the and certainly when you get to the playoffs. The mid-range game becomes really important because they're going to take away what you want Your to do. Your strengths, no right? question. So you've got to be able to find a different way to score. Scoring at all three levels is really important. And I think the fact that the analytics folks, and again, this is just one example. I mean, we could do an analytics thing all, all, all day long. Loud, but, yeah. uh, but the fact is that uh, it, in many ways, the, the analytics has, has just it's reduced the game mm -hmm. as opposed to expanding the game. I, we've talked about this. I, I know you're a big component of traditional bigs. Mm -hmm. Do you think we ever could get back to that style? Because it seems like all the young players that are coming in, they're already <laughs> trained yep. to do exactly what you're talking about, and that's launch three-pointers. Yep. Do you think yeah. we ever get back to Elijah Wan and David Robinson and Patrick Ewan? I don't, I, I don't know, but you, it, it's funny. I, I look at a guy like Walker Kessler in Utah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you know, he's a tradi he's a traditional big. I mean, he's certainly not shooting threes. Now, he's not a back to the basket player. You're not right. throwing it to him on the block or anything like I that. I don't even think he's developed offensively. No, I mean yet. he's not not even not even close. Yeah. And, and you know, I don't know if that if that gets developed it, once you hit the NBA. You know, mm -hmm. maybe if you have a couple of great summers working with trainers and whatnot, that you you can develop it to some degree. But like, I'm really curious. Just in the college game, you know, Zach Eady at Purdue. Mm -hmm. You know, what does that look like yeah. at the next level and does and, and has what Kessler has Provided, done this year yeah. for Utah does that give NBA teams something else to think about yeah, as far as the desire to use a big and you know, look you know we can all we all know what the arguments are against it it's, it, it's not even so much on offense but it's on defense yeah, yeah. because the floor is so spread out can those guys you know uh, do enough uh, out on the floor to to make a difference um I don't know. I see the way Kessler's blocking shots, and, yeah, <laughs> and and I see certainly in our case with the Mavericks the problems we have in defending the rim. And yes. I don't know, a guy like Walker Kessler looks pretty good to me. <laughs> I, I would concur with you 100, percent Coop. A lot of conversation, man, about load management, and I, I know you're going to give me a different perspective. I've heard <laughs> Charles Bach Barkley. I've heard what Perkin Kendrick Perkin has to say about it. But carry the hell on. <laughs> yeah, carry on. Yeah, he carries on. Yeah. Let him carry on. But in, in, anyway, Coop, what's your take on load management? I mean, we back when I was in the league, was afraid to miss games because you thought you weren't going to get your job back. Right. You understand right. what I'm saying? So never wanted to miss games. I think back then guys played – more guys played 82 games sure. than ever before. Right. Well, we had five guys that played 82 last year. Uh -huh. uh, you know, Dwight Powell for the Mavericks being one of them. Uh -huh. um, obviously, I'm not a fan of it. On some level, I, I see what has happened here. It's not unlike starting pitchers in baseball or great racehorses in thoroughbred racing mm -hmm. uh, who, who don't race but three or four times a year and then get, re get retired, you know. Yeah. But... 
if you're trying to grow your sport, if you want your sport to even not just to grow but sustain, your best has to be out there mm -hmm. as as much as possible. Yep. Um, you know, I, I know it's funny in an era where the uh, the medical information is better than it's ever been. The training is better than it's Absolutely. ever been. The nutrition All is better high. than it's ever been. Yes. That we're getting, we're asking players, and it, and and I don't blame the players. You know, a lot of the, you know, maybe a guy like Kawhi. I mean, he's he's a little unusual in that sense. But I don't hear many players saying, "I don't want to play." Right. I, I think players do want to play. They're being told by their training staffs and their management, no, you're not going to play mm -hmm. because we need to save you for something bigger, right. which is, in my opinion, a very arrogant position to take because you're, you're assuming things. And, for instance, this year in the Western Conference, we got teams 4 through 13 that are separated by four games. Is it so uh, – are, are you arrogant to really believe that you're, you're going to be in the playoffs not playing your best <laughs> players? I mean – so I got. I have That's a, a to me. I, I mean, I don't. I don't see it. Right. So so I so I have a problem with that, um, and I do think I have a solution too. Okay. <laughs> Give it to me. Cool. The the solution to me is to uh, tie postseason awards, mm -hmm. whether it's MVP, you know, uh, first team All NBA or, or whatever it is, yeah. to games played and minutes played. Yes. To where basically I would say. 66 games, which is about 80% of the season, mm -hmm. and playing 30 minutes a game. So it's not like you can have a guy take, take do what Giannis did in the All Star game, like right, come out, right, right. start, get and a cameo, get and go and go sit down. No, just no, 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 to, no, just to get his bonus. Right, just right. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's that, that. That's not the case. You play 30 minutes, play 66 games, and you're eligible. And I, I'd be very interested to see, you know. If if the players and the uh, and the league who are now negotiating a new CBA, and I think mm -hmm. we're probably going to see one here in the next month, yes, uh, you know if that is a part of it at all, because I mean, the league has a terrible perception problem. They ha they have they, they have a problem that their their best players are perceived as not wanting to play, and you as a league. You've got to be able to solve that problem. You've got to be able to go to your teams, and you've got to be able to go to your players mm -hmm. and say, look, th this is an issue that is bigger than all of us, and how together are we going to solve this? Mm -hmm. I think that's one because way. Because the fans are, are – yeah, they're I mean, the one that's suffering well, through Well, again, it. you know, the most important thing a fan can do right now is when the schedule comes out in August, you look at your team's schedule, you see – uh, you know, the, the Warriors are coming to the American Airlines Center. Yes. Uh, you want to make sure that they're not on the second night of back-to-back. -back. And that's true. Everybody in the league, like if, if Luca, and especially when Luca goes to the East, mm -hmm. you know, like he went to Cleveland this year yes. on the second night of back-to-back. -back. That's his you know, biggest fan base. Right, right. The biggest Slovenian fan base yes. outside of Slovenia, Ljubljana itself, right? And he, <laughs> and, and he didn't play. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of disappointed people. A lot of disappointed yeah. people. So when you're, especially in the interconference games where you're only going to a place once. Good point. Uh, you know, as a fan you really need to check the schedule uh, before you even think about buying tickets. And, and a fan should never have to think like that. But you have to now until the league and the players and the teams can come to some type of resolution. If you can answer this question, I, well, I know why, because I, I just know why. But why in the hell is scoring where it is this year? I mean, it, it's ridiculous. We were just talking, Ted, and – Ren and I were just talking about the game last week, Clippers mm -hmm. against Sacramento. Sacramento. 178? 176, 175. Double overtime. Why? 153 at the end of regulation. <laughs> Why is that so common this year? Well, it's the ultimate manifestation of what took place uh, really over, really almost 20 years ago with the, the whole notion of freedom of movement. Uh, where, Derek, you, you know that... I mean, you made a pretty good reputation of being able to shut guys down because you could yes, put your, you could put your hands on people out top, yeah, uh, and and kind of direct them where you yes. wanted them to go Use it as, as a, an advantage, right? As opposed yeah. to where they wanted to go, or you know, um, off the ball cutters. 
you know, getting bumped in the lane and get yeah. where, you know, that used to be okay. Uh, opposed to it. walking right to the block right? with no resistance. <laughs> right. And you let a guy like Shucks, LeBron, Mark Aguirre, back, <laughs> back in the day, you let a guy establish himself that deep. Right. You're at their mercy. Right. Absolutely. So I, I think there's, there's a lot of that. Uh, but I do think that the skill level of the players uh, – in large part because, you know, they're pretty much working all year round, which, uh -huh. again, I don't know if that's a great idea for the long-term health of the player and thus, by extension, the long-term health of the league. Uh, I, th I think every athlete is just, just, you know, every athlete needs a vacation. You know, every athlete needs to be able to get away from it for, yes. for a period of time. Uh, but very few do. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it's one thing, you know, to, to play in the summer internationally or yeah, of course. as opposed to, you know, getting in the gym and every day, you know, working on your jumper, or working on your drop step or working on your crossover. Um, you know, th I mean, that that stuff's hard. And it, and it takes I think it takes a lot more out of you than it does even when you're playing games in the summertime. Mm -hmm. So when are you, you going to get that rest? So I, I think there, the skill level, though, is extraordinary. Yes. Uh, and that pretty much goes to shooting. I mean, you know, and especially with the three-point shot being weaponized as it's been, uh, everybody's being asked to shoot it. Well, mm -hmm. if everybody's being asked to shoot it, it means everybody's got to be working on it. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so I, I think you have the combination of uh, defenses kind of being neutered and offenses being uh, allowed to do pretty much what they want to do and, and, and the – uh, preparation to being allowed to do what you what you want to do has taken it to an entirely different level. Look, you know, I want to bring the hand check back in the game. Right. I, I, I really, you know, may, maybe not so much like where you had it back in the day yeah. where, or, I mean, you could pretty much do it everywhere. Yeah. And then it used to be, uh, oh, and it's supposed to be now, you can't touch them uh, above the foul line. Um, you know, I, I would move it, uh, you know, if you, if you want to move it out a little bit, I mean, I'd say, you know, let them hand check you until the, until the three-point line. You know, mm -hmm. let's just... It'll make a difference. Maybe, I think it would make a difference. Yeah. Um, you know, do that. And frankly, I'd allow defenses to play however they want to play, like they do in FIBA. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, if you have a 7'4 guy, if you have Walker Kessler, you know, yeah. who's a great shot blocker, standing in the middle of the lane and clogging things up, well... That, that's okay. Make the offense think differently mm -hmm. about, uh, about how they want to approach it. Uh, I'd get rid of the corner three. The corner three is the most valuable shot in basketball. Yeah. You're getting the same for shooting that corner three than you are shooting you know, at the top of the arc. Yeah. Um, and, and, and then to that extent, I would move the three-point line back. I would move it back maybe even as far as two feet from where it is right now mm -hmm. and you know just basically put that across the floor it gets rid it gets rid of the corner three mm -hmm. uh and also it it basically brings back those who can really shoot it mm -hmm. uh you know as, as opposed to asking everybody to mm -hmm. shoot it just because you you have to be able to do that as part of the game um it, it brings i think the real it brings the skill level back uh, for those guys who can really shoot it from deep right. but at the same time i think it allows for different ways to play offense uh, and I, I think it provides a, a greater balance in the game. And, you know, I, listen, that game in, Sac uh, in L.A. the other night was yeah. incredibly entertaining. The skill level was off I stayed the chart. up and watched it. Well, it was and, <laughs> and you know what? And, and you can watch a lot of our games, yeah. and the skill level was absolutely off the charts. Absolutely. Uh, but I don't know that we need, you know, teams to be scoring 125 a night for it to be an entertaining product. Right. We don't want to go back to where we were uh, with the Knicks and the Rockets in the 94 finals. Right. We, we, we're neither, no I, team scored 100 in that series at all. I was there, Coop. I know you were there. <laughs> <laughs> and it was boring basketball, I would have to admit, and echo your same sentiments, man. How do you fix the all-star weekend? I, I, I think is another good question for a guy like yourself that's seen and experienced so many all-star games. Well, it's hard to fix the game. Mm -hmm. um, Guys don't want to get hurt. They just, they just don't want to get hurt. Yeah, so they're so not going to take it and, and, and especially now that it, it happens so late in the season. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically the three-quarter mark of the season. You yeah. know, you, you've come so far to get ultimately to where you want to go. You mm -hmm. don't really want to mess it up. And let's face it, the, the, the weekend has become – a corporate meet and greet, you know, for, for the players to meet with their sponsors and mm -hmm. potentially meet with other sponsors. And, uh, you know, it's the basketball has become 
terribly secondary. It's it's a lot in many ways a lot like the pro what the Pro Bowl was. Yes, yes, and then, yes. And I, and I don't know how you fix it. I mean, if you, if you have a th- just kind of do what hockey does, and you know. Oh, they changed completely. No, they, they, this you know, year. divided up by divisions, or yeah. you know, football isn't even. You know, they're playing a flag football game and doing <laughs> yeah. doing some other stuff, which I, I, I don't watch. Right, I'm sorry right. To say. And, no, and and I, I don't watch it. And frankly, <laughs> I mean, I, I knew Giannis uh, came out of the game mm-hmm. uh, early, but uh, you know, there was just such a production before the game. You know, leading into the game, it was like. Just play the game. Just it's it's okay, and you want to have a longer halftime. Have a longer halftime. But it was it was. I I don't know quite how you fix all of that. Uh, you know the NBA is so dependent on its corporate sp- on its corporate partners. It's, as, it's as, a team, right? A, as, yeah. as as every league is, together. and and th- and this is this is the best way for them, other than in the NBA Finals, mm-hmm. to be able to get everybody in one place at one time. It makes a lot of sense what you're saying, Coop. We do a uh, a, a deal on Harps Court called fact or fiction, okay? <laughs> fact or fiction, Coop, and I know I'll get the truth out of you. The 211 Maverick team was the best team in Maverick history. 2011 team? The championship team. No, I mean, they, false. Best team was the 07 team. The team that Avery le- as the coach. The team that won 67 games. 67 games. And lost to, somehow lost to the Warriors in the first round. Mm-hmm. Nelly was the coach. Uh, it was against Nelly in the, in yeah, the, in right, the playoffs. That's right. It was, it was Avery was and, Avery was the coach. And Nelly, <laughs> and Nelly just Nelly just <laughs> took him out behind the woodshed as a coach, yeah. and and it was and it was brilliant. It truly was brilliant. But yeah. but that Mavericks team was a truly dominant team. And especially after starting the year zero and four, uh-huh. <laughs> they still won. Oh, I remember it. Right, they still yeah. won sixty seven games. Yeah. Uh, they they had everything it took to win except they caught a team that was they caught a bad matchup right yeah. which is true of everything that is yeah. true about the playoffs it's it's so much about matchups and of course ironically it was a matchup that could have been avoided uh, had they had the Mavericks played players in game late in the season against Golden State and and they didn't and they lost that game and it wound up with Golden State being able to get into eighth place and uh, and play them in the first round but that Mavericks team I mean just Point differential, defensive rating, yeah. you know, all, all the metrics that we use, it, it was absolutely stunning that they didn't win. But mm-hmm. the, the, the best team, quote-unquote team, chemistry, the 11 team had it because the 11 team had so many players who were so accomplished. They had done so many amazing individual things mm-hmm. in their careers right. except for one thing. And that's the thing that they all gathered around to do. And obviously, you know, Dirk uh, was the the first among, um, I want to say first among equals, but he probably was better than than everybody else. But, of course, Dirk never looked at himself that way. Right. Um, And so, you know, guys like Peja and and Jason Terry Uh and and Jason Kidd and, you know, guys who had done so much. Sean Marion. Sean Marion. My goodness. You know, Jason Terry was the sixth man of the year. Yeah. You know, it's like they, they had done so much and yet, they hadn't won. Right. So what are we going to do to, to win? How are we going to get that done? And they came together to be able to do that. Coop, I love you. You know I do. <laughs> You're one of my favorite guys. I call you the GOAT <laughs> everywhere I go. Where would you put the Mavericks team that took the Lakers to the Western Conference Finals in 87, 88, I think? Yeah, 88. Um, because I could that, bring Perk and Mark and Roe and, and Donaldson and Roy Tarpley. Probably, yeah. I can bring all those guys in here, and they would make an argument for us being one of the top teams in in, in Mavericks history. And so where, and, where, and it was funny because and and kind of in in the same vein, you know, there was a veteran coach that was brought in. Yeah, you know, John McLeod was brought in yes, to replace sir. Dick. Uh, the you know, late when, when John Dick McLeod. Decided, when, when Dick decided, but but John McLeod, but he had the right touch mm-hmm. for you guys. At that time, he was just like Rick was the right coach mm-hmm. to coach those veterans in, in, in eleven. So, yeah. but um, where do I guess I, that uh, puts you know, us third then, Coop? Well, I, mean, well, 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 I, I didn't realize Coop? I didn't realize I was ranking. I didn't realize I was ranking everybody. <laughs> no, but, you're ranking the best, the top. Okay, the, the, let's okay, just say the okay, top yeah, no, three teams. I, I, yeah, I would say what order would yes, you place I, them? I, in? Yes, I would say that eighty eight team was third. But <laughs> I, I would, I, I tell you what, I you know, and I know you wonder this even more <laughs> than I wonder it, you know. 
game seven. You no, know, Mark didn't come back in, and, yeah, and it yeah, just, yeah, it yeah. just and, and you were and it was a two point. People forget, I think many forget, it was a two point game with six minutes to go, yeah, in game seven. So you know, it, you were, yeah. you literally were at the lip of the cup, yeah. And you did mention chemistry when it comes to yeah. that, to that uh, that that two eleven team. Should Mark Aguirre have his jersey retired as a Dallas Maverick? It's a hard call. I mean, you I, know, I, here's the thing. I, you know what. I don't know that I'm really equipped to answer that. I, you know, I, 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 I mean, here. I, I mean, I've been, been here. I, so, I mean, I, I look at guys like you and Roe yeah. uh, as as far more equipped because you know you know far more about everything yeah. that happened. Uh, yeah. But I mean, okay, from the outside, from the outside looking in, yeah. um, even as much as he made life difficult for mm-hmm. everybody, mm-hmm. I would say yes. He does. He does. He does. He was, and truly, truly elite he scorer. The drink. I mean, look, Derek. You knew when you threw him the ball on yes, the left blo- on the left block. It was not only was going up. It was going in. Yes. And and again, you know, he wasn't shooting many threes. You weren't guys weren't shooting many threes back. In the, but he I mean he was a he's six five maybe six five, mm-hmm. but he was a fifty percent shooter basically playing. An interior, a six eight or six nine yes. kind of game. That's why I asked the question. I, I mean, he he was an incredible scorer. I mean, just and and he and he had an, an incredibly high basketball IQ. Mm. I mean, he I mean he un, he understood what he was supposed to do. He understood what you were supposed to do too. And you know, if you didn't and if you didn't do it, then yeah. you know he, you know, not so much that he would say, "Come on, man, do it." He would yeah. just mope himself yeah. and it would and it would affect yeah. the team. But it, but from a pure talent standpoint, and certainly. Uh, along with Brad and Roe and you as representatives of the uh, of, of the Mavericks you know, coming into existence and yeah. then you know developing as a franchise, I think it I think it would be great if they actually went ahead and did it. I, I, I do too. And the thing that I, I always go back to is that Mavericks started when uh, 1980. 1980. Okay, I was graduating high school. Mark Aguirre was the Mavericks' first. Ever first round draft pick? Correct? Well, uh, Kiki was, but Kiki, that's but, but, but he wanted, but he wanted to play well, so, here. But, so, right, so okay, Kiki. so he doesn't, so he doesn't count. <laughs> so, but yes, so Mark so, was the first, yes, the first player, yeah, that uh, the Mavericks drafted who 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 wound up playing in Dallas yeah. as, as an overall number one pick. And does that count for something? Um, I don't. I mean, I, you know what? Somewhat, no, no, I I don't know if if that fact counts yeah. more than the fact that he was incredibly productive in his time. And as the, and as the Mavericks grew as a franchise, and you know made the playoffs, mm-hmm. uh, what in his uh, in his what third year in the league, um, you know after eighty four, uh, and and the fact that he you know is the last Maverick and uh, you know the only Maverick to to lead the league in scoring, you know to yeah. to just. For, for all of those things, I mean, I, I don't think his contributions can be ignored. I just, you know, I, I don't but think they that, have been cool. I know. Why do you think they have been? Well, because I think there's the way, the way it's just the way the, the, the things ended very badly. Yeah. They just ended very badly here. And, you know, you know, he and, and even uh, when they were going well, you know, the fact mm-hmm. that he and Dick got into it all the time and yeah. got into it you know, pretty publicly, too, at times, of course. Of uh, course. you know, that that didn't sit well. No, with a lot of people now. Uh, as far as but I, I, I keep I, I, in mind now, I'm gonna, I'm trying my best to to get some of the mud off of my guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I think Mark was one of the most misunderstood guys mm-hmm. that's ever played in the league. Mm-hmm. You know? And and at times, Mark definitely, you know, w- 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 was hard to deal with right. at times. I always felt like I could that he would listen when I said something to him. Young at the time, cool. Twenty-two. No, Mark was younger than that mm-hmm. when he came into the league. How much do you 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 give him a pass with some of that being being the thing? I mean, just a young player. I mean, think about some of the stuff that goes on now <laughs> with, with players. Um, it, it was well, nothing. Well, also that again, what happens today? Is almost it, well. It is far more accepted than it than it was when Mark. <laughs> so played. that's why well, that's where get, the past what, come what Mark, in. Cool. What Mark played, he played three years at DePaul, two years at DePaul, uh, uh, one year, 
No, no, no. He played more than that because he. You're played, right. You're right. He yeah. played two years. He, played, okay, he came so in as a as a junior. Right. So he, he yeah, played, after his uh, right, sophomore they, they, year, they they lost and they lost to St. Joe's in '80, and mm-hmm. uh, you know after they had, shocked the world. Right. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> fandom is so visceral. <laughs> if, you know, and well, really, and, and and it is what you know what sort of gets the the passion of the fans, which extends then to, you know, the league's own six team success and league success that people care, they care so much. So when there's an assumption correctly or incorrectly, that some guy was just making my team's life miserable, (laughs) then, you know, people, uh, you know, have a hard time getting rid of that. Now, yeah. again, as you say, it's been a long time. I mean, it's been a, been a long, long time. <laughs> and I, I, I also equate it to Coop, just being young and immature. Mm-hmm. I think about some of the stuff I was doing when I was a freshman, a, a rookie mm-hmm. in the NBA. I was Coach Mata's whooping boy. <laughs> I mean, he, he got on me for walking in the, to practice. <laughs> I mean, all the time. So I, I just think the fact that you're young at the time, immature at the time, mm-hmm. And kind of self-absorbed, mm-hmm. I, I would admit that, because I thought when I got to Dallas, I was going to start. Mm-hmm. I thought I was better than Brad, Roe, whoever, Elston Turner, right. whoever was here. I'm like, I, I didn't know him a great deal. I knew Roe, and I knew what Brad did at Maryland. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, shucks, I'm starting. <laughs> Boy, was I in for a rude awakening, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I just think when you're a young man, you make mistakes. But nonetheless, that, that I, I appreciate your, no, I, your I, candor. But, but I do ultimately... I think it would be a really cool moment with as much yes. time that has passed by. Yes. You know, it's like you, you don't want to forget your past. Right. And Mark was a huge part of that past and, That's and, all I'm and the growing of what ultimately the Mavericks franchise has become. So, uh, and and I'll admit that, that for a long time I was of the opinion, nah, can't happen. Right. You know, it shouldn't happen. I think most people but, were. But um, I've, I've definitely come around to the idea that. Man, I, I mean, I just remember him sitting. I, I can't get it out of my mind that image of him sitting down on that block and you throwing him the ball. Yeah, and it's, man, it's go, I couldn't it's, either. He it's, made it's, me. It's, I, go, it's going in. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I totally agree with you. You know, you, you were, were you in Philadelphia when Wilt Chamberlain was playing there? No, no, no. I, I grew up in New York. I, saw, I grew up in New York. So, I knew that yeah, in yeah, Long Island, but. Yeah. You saw Wilt. You saw I did some see, of the I am old, I'm old enough to have seen Wilt. Yeah, yes. I saw Wilt. You saw Kareem in, right. his hey, hey, Kareem in his heyday. And some of the all-time greats back back in the day, Bill Russell, mm-hmm. uh, those Nick teams that, that were championships. Mm-hmm. They won two championships. Right. Um, then comes a guy named Luka Doncic. Have you ever, Coop, because I haven't seen anybody like Luka, Certainly not at this age. I haven't seen anybody like Luca. Uh, you know, there's a there's a lot of LeBron in his game. Mm-hmm. Clearly, uh, there's a lot of Larry Bird in his game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, he, but he's the original Luka Doncic, yes. right? It went when all it, hey, right when when all <laughs> when all is said and done. That's yeah, right. we say, yeah, he does this like LeBron. Yeah. and I'll never forget the first we, first time uh, we were in Cleveland. And um, Luca had one of those uh, incandescent first halves, you know, where he goes for like twenty eight. Yeah. Uh, and and Jim Jones, who yeah, was a pretty good Jim. big man back in the day, for you know, the he, Cavaliers, right? And he and he does the radio color for the Cavaliers Absolutely. now. Absolutely. He, he literally accosts me at halftime, mm-hmm. puts his very big strong hands <laughs> on my shoulders, <laughs> yeah. and says, "I don't believe I've, I'm watching LeBron. I'm watching <laughs> yeah. LeBron all over again." Yeah. yeah. And it's like, so uh, he 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 really. He's a fabulous talent. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but like everybody else, he's not perfect. Right, of course not. And, uh, but... To, to be able... I laugh to, at the people that think that he is cool, yeah, that he's perfect. Right, I right. think it's a joke that people think you that. Know, but, and, and, yeah. and you can see how other teams and what other teams think of him because of the defenses that they try to mm-hmm. play against him and yes, how, generally speaking, in fact, far more often than not, he solves whatever you're throwing at him, mm-hmm. and he's going to get his team in a position to where they are going to get a great shot and more than likely be able to score. Uh, you know, I, I found it interesting, you know, even in the Indiana game, mm-hmm. uh, where, you know, Rick, I mean, I haven't seen this in the NBA 
in, in several years anyway, maybe even longer than that. Yeah. I mean, two guys on the ball, ball in the backcourt, yeah. 94 feet, and yeah. you know, making him give it up. Um, That's that but, old Hubie Brown type stuff. Right? <laughs> really? <laughs> when he was with the Knicks. I remember it. Uh, but, you know, it, it took a while for the Mavericks to really solve that because, uh -huh. you know, they, I think at the beginning, not that they, they turned it over very much in the game, but it's almost like they were thinking, okay, he's going to make that pass. And then we'll wait for Luca to come get the ball, and then we'll start our offense. As opposed to, and I th they figured it out, and I think Luca was a huge part. They said, "Look, I'm throwing you the ball. Mm -hmm. Go, yeah, make go, something happen. go. Something yeah. happen at that we'll point. I mean, you've got you've got you've got four on three at that well, yeah. point. This, that's yeah. working for us. Mm -hmm. And and I think he has as good an understanding of that. And you, you know, you talk about young guys, you know, who yeah. don't have it a lot, of, you know, all on the ball. I mean, when it comes to playing the game of basketball, he's pretty well got things figured out. There's just not a lot that he hasn't seen and yeah. doesn't know the answer to. With that being said, what, what, what do you think his shortcomings are? Well, his temper, number one. I mean, that, that goes without saying. Uh, you know, at, at some point, as much as you don't want to let it go, mm -hmm. you got to let it go because yeah. when you're not well, letting it go. The main reason he should let it go, Coop, he leads the league in free throw shooting. With 11, 12 free right. throws a game. Well, yeah, yeah he, uh, I think Giannis and Embiid. Yeah, he's, okay. he's, he's third now. Okay. But, but, but right, but he's that. averaging 11 free throws a game. Yeah. You're getting calls. Okay. All the time. <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> you're get, you're, now, yeah. yes, everybody thinks they should get more. You know, Rick Barry back in the 60s. And, <laughs> the great Rick what, Barry. The great Rick Barry. You can yes. talk about <laughs> automatic scores, okay? Now, nobody argued more. Yeah. Tim Duncan was not a huge score, but Tim Duncan in his opinion yeah. never committed a foul so true. N n never never ever he, you know? there were a lot of fishers that didn't approve of tim duncan mm -hmm. a lot of guys right. a lot of guys had it in for tim duncan so you know so, so luke is not a, he's definitely not alone in this but yeah. in the end especially with a team that is struggling as much defensively as the mavericks are at the very least Play five on five, you know. Right. You know, give the other guys a chance yes. to get yes. something. So, yeah, temper. Um, his three point shooting is 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 streaky. You know, his free throw shooting is extraordinarily streaky, yeah. even for the number of free throws. And 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 I, and I think to you know to that extent, Luca, you know, he is an artiste, mm -hmm. and you know, he does things in many ways because as we talked about he seems to, to know just about everything that you have to do yeah. on a basketball floor uh, he needs things other than the routine mm -hmm. and free throw shooting really good free throw shooting mm -hmm. is nothing if not about routine and you'll notice when when Luca that's why guys can come off the street right and out shoot guys in the NBA and in right. college you know because of repetition that you're speaking of well and you know, you can always tell with Luca when when he's struggling. A lot of times when he's missing, he's he's not going through the shot. He's he's kind of fading back from the shot. Uh, you know, like uh, the game against Indiana, uh, he was he was left on like three, you know three or four of them of the misses that he I think he had four misses in the game. At least three yeah. of them were were, yeah. were like long and left. You know, sometimes he'll miss him to the right. Um, there, there's there's not even a consistency to his misses, mm -hmm. which then becomes somewhat problematic um you know and his three-point shooting he's he's still below average by nba standards three-point right. shooter and he takes a lot of them yeah uh a lot of tough ones well, and, a, and a lot of tough ones exactly <laughs> I mean. which and and one of the reasons i think that you know the mavericks were so excited about bringing kyrie irving in was the fact that well kyrie can handle it a little bit there's a different way of of playing offense to where luca might be able to get some catch and shoots to just you know like everybody else gets catch and shoots in the league and so he doesn't have to create them for himself although i do think that uh, deep in his heart i think he loves the challenge <laughs> of getting <laughs> Getting somebody off the switch Absolutely. and crossing over and stepping back and then hitting that shot and that listen, makes us all go ooh and ah. Yeah, I was just gonna say he likes to get the oohs and all. That's yeah, so I so I mean, look. So and, and let's face it, his turnovers have improved dramatically this just year. Just three this year. You know, he's uh, you know way way down in that yeah. regard. He was up uh, to you know, six, five and, and, six. And, you know, and I've always felt that it, not that he needed to be Chris Paul because few have ever have played it like Chris Paul. Yeah. Uh, you know, where your assist to turnover ratio is like four and a half to one or Do something like that. you think like that. that stat's overrated? No. no I, because if you have the ball, if you think about Magic, Stockton, mm -hmm. back in the day, Coop, they turned it over more than anybody. Because if you're trying to make plays... Yeah, but but Stockton... Uh, 
I, I think Stockton's assist to turnover ratio was still fantastic. I oh, mean, I'm he, sure he, over, no, the, was, over the long haul. No, I, I, but, but generally speaking, you know, if you're a three to one, yeah. I mean, and and Grant assists are a function of guys making shots. shots if guys yeah. don't make shots, depending on somebody else, right? Yeah. So, but the fact that uh, you know, especially in the Mavericks case where they're playing as slowly as they play mm -hmm. um, and you're not getting as many possessions per game as other teams are, you can't really afford to be turning over the ball. You can't be throwing, you know, 40 foot cross court passes through the zone and thinking right. that it's going to get there. And, you know, you like uh, in the Indiana game, the one, there was one time that he was doubled and he got through it, but he tried to throw like a 35 foot bounce pass or something like that. Yeah. You know, that no, NBA, no. And, and NBA athletes are, are way too good. You know, they're, they're going to get that pass Absolutely. and that becomes a problem. So, so look, like we say, he's, he's not perfect. He has things he can work on, yeah. but you know, I, as I said with Dirk, I have the highest honor and most distinct privilege to yeah. try to describe what this guy does yeah, every yeah. night. And you it's know fun. what? I mean, he's a challenge for me because there's, you know, I, I think there's only so many ways you can describe yeah. things, and yet he's challenging me to try to find a different way to describe yeah, it. Yeah, Coop, that's why I call you the GOAT because I was just going to go Kyrie and Luca together. You beat me to it. Can that work? Do they coexist as players? Both ball-dominant guys, although Kyrie – to, to his credit, has played with a lot of stars and been able to coexist with them. And I think we've seen here that it certainly hasn't affected the, the, the offense. I mean, they're, At all. they're, they're, I mean, their net rating, uh, you know, is, is way positive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I th the, the bigger issue comes, you know, in how the Mavericks try to close out games and who's going to do that. Yeah. Uh, Last know, night was well, a, a, again, right against Indiana against now, the Pacers. Right, that, that was uh, you know that was it was Kyrie's turn. I guess what always frustrates me though about last uh, you know last possession offense, and and I I don't know if this was the case you know when you were playing Derek, but for whatever reason, and again maybe it's just simply to avoid the turnover. Mm -hmm. That teams don't run their offense. Teams they put it in somebody's Ky hands, somebody's hands, and yeah. say go go get a bucket. Go go do this. Easier said than done, too. Uh, and and uh, much easier yeah. said than done. But it just seems to me that you would be so much, uh, you'd be a lot more difficult to defend mm -hmm. as a result if, if, if you, you ran actually, your if, if if you ran your stuff. Yeah. And so you know the fact that at least you know we watch the Mavericks every night and and the Mavericks really haven't done that. I mean they 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 throw it in to whoever it is and he's gonna you know he's gonna do something you know try, try to you know take something off the bounce and, you know, pull up and, uh, you know, try to make a shot. And, you know, it's, it's ironic that the Mavericks this year have had only one basket in the last three and a half seconds, uh, in the last five seconds of a game to either win or tie. And that was Kemba Walker in, yeah, yeah. Cle in Cleveland I on, 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 on that layup. He had 30 I mean, points that night. Yes, he did. Yeah. But, but again, um, that's the only time all year that they've made a shot. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, it's like, I think back to the, uh, and granted, these plays didn't work, but they were as far as getting the shot to fall. But game six against Utah, mm -hmm. when Bogdanovich got yes. that, that flare and, and that wide open got shot. got exactly what he wanted. And, yeah. and the game against Golden State earlier this year, Clay Thompson, who, as it turned out, did, you know, was not having a good game. Struggling but, the whole night. I but, know where you're man, going. But they ran, they ran that play, and yeah. he was so open, and you don't think everybody was just yeah. scared out of their ever-loving Well, lives. I was actually scared when Bogdanovich had his <laughs> right. shot because he was playing well that particular night. Yeah. He had missed in that game right. during the playoffs last year. So, you know, I mean, that, that's one thing I think that, you know, ultimately could help if you, you know, you, and, and we saw Milwaukee, uh, beat the Mavericks this year when they threw it over the top to Lopez, uh -huh. right, at, at the yep, rim. Yep, yep. So, you know, th there are different ways to play it other than just, you know, simply getting into, you know, a guy's hand mm -hmm. uh, and have him dribble and try to create something. Um, but I think ultimately, I, I think it, 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 can, it can work. Mm -hmm. There's just not a lot of time. Right. You know, it's like you all you you wish the spacing has to be proper. Well, it's like you just wish that this deal could have been done 
two weeks ago or two yeah. weeks prior or three weeks give prior. Give you more time. And just give, give you more time. And, you know, so many teams, look, you know, the Suns are about to go through this with Durant. Mm-hmm. You know, they've got, they got stars on their team now. I mean, they got guys, plenty of guys capable of taking a last yeah. shot. Mm-hmm. You know, where, where does the ball go with them? How, did, how do they integrate, you know, Durant into what they're doing? You know what? And we're going to see this on Sunday when the, when the Mavericks play the Suns. Yeah, you know. uh, but, but there's so many situations like that. You know, last year with Harden and Kyrie and, and Durant yeah. in, in Brooklyn, right? Yeah, or, yeah. or two years ago, anyway. So, yeah. you know, how, you know, how does that all work? And, and generally speaking, you know, if you look through NBA history, other than Rasheed Wallace getting traded to Detroit back mm-hmm. in 2004, yeah. Clyde Drexler got traded to, to Houston, Houston. Yeah. in 90. How many real blockbuster midseason Deals. trades mm-hmm. have resulted in, res, resulted in something that the team really won, whether it be a championship or, yeah. or getting to the finals or, or the conference finals or something like that? You know, you, you, you'd love to have a training camp, but mm-hmm. as we know, nobody practices now either. So <laughs> It's true. It's true. What, what, where do you think the league is right now, Coop? Do you, you, you think – I think it's in good hands. With, I, with I do. The, the I new do generation. think. The, I do think the league's in good hands uh, because I think the, the players are, are. I think more than any other sport, the players are so visible, and, and and fans feel as if they can relate to those players. Not to mention the fact that these players are incredibly skilled. Uh, you know, just doing things that you know, we, seen we, we, we we could only dream of. So I, I do think it's good. It, it's, in a, it's in a really good place. Now, I think it can be better, as we talked about. I think, you know, trying to get the game back into a little more balance. I don't think, you know, fans would love Steph Curry any less if uh, he, he was scoring, you know, 28 a game instead of 31 a game, right? Yeah, same you know, with Luke. Right, or, you know, Luca the same way. I don't, yeah. I don't think they're, they're not falling in love with those players if, mm-hmm. if there is a balance between offense and defense that comes in. Um, it, you know, there's a really good relationship between uh, the Players Association and the league yes. uh, to where, uh, you know, it looks like there's going to get a, a, deal a deal be done, done by yeah. the end of March. I think they will. Uh, and so... Hoping they will anyway. Well, right. So, the, yeah. the, you know, there, there, there are no labor issues you right. know, in the league to speak of. There that, have been. There has been and, sometimes. And absolutely, there's yeah. been. So, you know, that's really important. Uh, TV... Loves the NBA. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the it league, generates it, revenue for the, everybody. The, the, the league is about to absolutely, they'll go beyond Don King in the wheelbarrow, okay? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, they're about to, to roll in cash. And, you know, again, what, what, is that, what does that look like? Yeah. Um, you know, as far as uh, partners and, and what have you. I mean, I think that the one thing they've got to get solved is something that apparently, uh, you know, baseball and hockey are going to have to solve too, and that's mm-hmm. the whole regional sports network deal. And yeah. that's something that people way smarter than I am, you know, have to, yeah. you know, figure out, you know, how will games, you know, be transmitted so that fans can actually see them play. You know, we, mm-hmm. can't, we can't go back to when I was growing up mm-hmm. and, you know, and the Knicks – uh, Knicks home games were never on television. Right. You know, Knicks, Knicks road games were on television. You know, you mm-hmm. never you never saw Madison yeah. Square Garden unless there was a, a national TV game, which yeah. and there aren't weren't as many then certainly as there are yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, you know, so you've got to be able to find a way to make sure that you know that everybody who wants to has a chance to see Luca go for 60, 20, right, 21, right. and ten. Right. It's incredible. <laughs> right. Most incredible game I've ever watched in my life. <laughs> Especially uh, sitting over there calling the right. game. Yep. It was absolutely insane against the Knicks that particular night. And I'm going to get you out of here shortly, Coop. But I want your picks. Who's coming out of the West? Who's coming out of the East, in your opinion? It's it's a log jam yep. on both the East and the West. Well, the, the East, not really. I mean, things have kind of... Well, Milwaukee just passed Boston. Right. And a half a game. And, again, and we'll, we'll assume good health for everybody, right? right? Because one injury... Messes yeah. up everything. Changes the whole right. complex. But uh, I'll take Milwaukee, mm-hmm. the, w- the way they're playing right now. I, I love... 15 straight? Uh, well, even beyond the winning streak, I love how Mike Budenholzer has adjusted his defense this year to where in the past three or four years, he was almost willing to allow teams to shoot threes. threes yeah. he would, he would allow, his teams allowed the most, mantra, yeah. the, the most three-pointers attempted with... The uh, caveat of we are not letting you score around the rim, mm-hmm. and now they have managed to keep that in in really good balance. 
uh, you know, where uh, they don't give up as many three-point attempts and thus as many three-pointers. And they're still elite around the rim with, with Lopez and Giannis. Um, I really like you know, adding guy like Joe Ingles coming off the bench. Uh, yes, and I think, yes. you know, he's, Jay Crowder, you know, Jay Crowder. I mean, there's, there's, yeah. t- there is toughness about them Absolutely. and skill. Um, I, I like them. I, I like them now. I, you know, for Boston, I want to love them. Yeah. It's like, I want to love Tatum. And then they do something <laughs> that, that takes you away right, from, you know, from and, feeling and I'm not, I'm not, I'm, and, and also let's face it. They they got to the finals with a rookie coach last year, mm-hmm. but at least he had been in the league for a long time. Mm-hmm. Joe Mazzulla's not been in the league for a long time. He's going to be tested. He's absolutely going to yeah. be tested for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I tell you what, I mean, and I do think Philadelphia is a wild card. Um, I I like Cleveland's team. I think they're a little too young. Yeah, but, they are. But the fact that they guard as well as they guard, I think you know, gives them maybe a puncher's chance. But I think I think it's Milwaukee in the East. And in the West, as, as much as I've wanted to not believe in Denver, uh, maybe it's because how in the past the Mavericks have been able to play so well against Denver mm-hmm. and, and sort of manage their way around Jokic to where he doesn't explode against them the way he does against everybody else. Uh, given how they're playing, uh, I, I loved bringing in Bryant uh, at, the, at the trade deadline to, uh-huh. you know, to get – Jokic, when he leaves the game, they, they yeah. won't lose much offensively, you know, with him. Um, you know, I, I just, I really, really like the, the rotation that they have. Uh, I think, boy, you know, and if Murray is right, mm-hmm. Bruce Brown coming off the bench. And mm. Bruce Brown's been really good here now for mm-hmm. the last year, first in Brooklyn and yeah. now here in Denver. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, er- everybody has flaws in the West, Several with significant flaws. Yeah, but I think Agreed. Denver at this point has, I think, figured out uh, how to minimize their flaws better than everybody else. Mm-hmm. So I think and Malone the, is a, is pretty. He's proven he, to be he, pretty he, solid. He's, he's really good. So I think for the first time uh, in their NBA history, the Denver Nuggets are going to go to the NBA Finals. Yeah. What 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 are the Mavericks' shortcomings as far as moving forward? As far as the playoffs is concerned, oh, the playoffs that's coming up. Yeah, well, I mean, what, what what's they got a guard? Mm-hmm. Got, they got a you know, it's offense is great. You know, as they say, offense sells tickets and defense wins championships. Right? Yeah, Pat Riley well, they, said it right. <laughs> well, well he and I think he borrowed it maybe from Vince Lombardi. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, <laughs> somebody. some great coach, some right? legendary coach. Right, it's it's been around a yeah. long time. Yeah, uh, but I, um, I mean, if if they can't get this solved. And they're in a stretch now. Maxi they, helps. Have and, him and, back. and you and know what? You could tell that Maxi helps. Yeah. Uh, even in, in the 24 minutes that he played. Mm-hmm. The problem is with Maxi, when you extend him beyond mm-hmm. 25 to 27 minutes, mm-hmm. then he's he's not the nearly he's not nearly as effective. Yeah. You and you wish he would rebound better than he does for his size. I mean, he's he, you would think as 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 athletic as he is yeah. that he'd be able to grab more rebounds than he does. And and re- rebounding is uh, you know obviously part of defense. And the Mavericks they're, they're getting out rebounded by an average of over five a game. And uh, you know they're only uh, and your your friend and my friend Mark Fowler came up yeah. with this. Uh, there were only two teams in the modern era that have ever been out rebounded by five a game and even made the playoffs. playoffs yeah, uh, and. You know, one of them, ironically enough, was the We Believe Warriors that beat the Mavericks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but that's not a, it's not a recipe for success. Right. So, you know, tell me that you're not going to give up 60 points in the paint. You know, tell me 62 that... 62 points the Lakers had. The other well, they're, they're allowing like 60, it's like 63 insane points in their last numbers. six games. I mean, yeah, that's it, it can't be a conga line to the rim. Yeah. And, and tell me that, you know, you're going to be able to just, you know, put some pressure on the ball and at mm-hmm. least... And I, I don't want to say, you know, they're not making an effort. I mean, I, th- I think at times, yeah, that, that, I, I think they try, but I just don't think they're, they're very good at it, and they're not very confident at it. And so, you know what I'll say to that is that if you think about all the great defensive teams, right, the one thing they have in common, and people think championship caliber teams aren't good defensively. When the Warriors were winning championships – they're they were the number one rated defense in the and league. And you know what? And they had to be That's right. because they turned the ball over so much. Yeah. <laughs> because their offense, as 
pleasing to the eye as it yeah. is, I mean, it's a turnover fest. Yeah. And so you got to make sure you're, you're protecting yourself at the other end. I'll ask you this, and I'll let you go, Coop. Go. <laughs> um, the Ma do the Mavericks have defensive personnel? That's the thing that, and, and, and that's, I, that worries and, and, right, me the and, most. And that's, I don't think they have natural defensive instinctive yes. players on their roster, which will be a bigger challenge to be good and consistent defensively. Well, you know, let's face it. Their best player is not a great defender. Right. I, I do think he has tried more yeah. this year than he, than, he, than he ever has in his in career. In passing lanes, right. doing you know, a lot of good stuff from that deflection but, standpoint. But, yeah, but as a Dorian Finney-Smith – was a naturally gifted defender, and and the Mavericks wanted to play defense. And, and wanted to play defense exactly. You know, it's harder and harder to find people who have that mindset. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, I don't. It's not going to be the case this year because their roster is what their roster is. Mm -hmm. But I think you know, as they look forward and trying to, you know, build their roster and reshape their roster, that they're going to have to try to find more players who have that particular mindset and who also, by the way, can shoot three-pointers. <laughs> cool. let, me, let me say this, man. Thank you so much for, for well, coming. Well, thanks for having you, me. You added nothing but quality to Harvest Court, <laughs> and I appreciate you coming on, man. We've talked hoop all the time, but not to this extent, not this long. It's almost been an hour, and I'm grateful for your time, man. We'll do it well, again sometime. I appreciate our friendship of uh, over 30 years. That's right. And uh, we'll continue to do that. I appreciate you. Thanks. The great Chuck Cooperstein. Thank you.